Hello and welcome to the big picture. After years of lack of clarity in the way the e-commerce companies worked in India, some clarity has been sought to be brought in. The decision of the government to allow 100% FDI in e-commerce companies, however with certain restrictions, is expected to make the whole business more regulated. However, there are already criticisms as to how this policy is going to affect the small retailers and also that the policy is dictated by foreign capital eager to capture the Indian markets. We will discuss today the pros and cons of this policy and how it would benefit or harm the consumers as well as businesses. To discuss this, I have with me Ajay Dua, former Secretary, Ministry of Industries and Commerce, Nilotpal Basu, Central Committee Member, CPIM, Gopal Krishna Agarwal, National Spokesperson, BJP, and Ashwini Mahajan, National Co-Convener of the Swadeshi Jagran Manch. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Dua, how important is this, you know, uh, policy decision which has been taken. Some say it is not actually anything new. I wouldn't say that there is nothing new in it, but uh, there is a point of view which, as well, there is a degree of it because a lot of e-commerce players were already in the marketplace. Right. I shouldn't use the word marketplace because that's in the specific <laughs> con context today. But they were already present in India. The growth in e-commerce which was taking place was at a phenomenal pace, having gone up from about a billion dollars to 14 billion dollars in about as many years. The, what, we, what this uh, notification by yesterday's government decision has done is given uh, the jure status to something which was already happening on, on the ground. Right. People were operating. And, uh, and, and happening illegally. Well, the, uh, some people, because, you know, there are different orders of different courts. Right. This was the players were exploiting an, un, an ambiguous zone. Okay. Uh, and to that extent, nothing revolutionary is going to happen with this thing having come about. But as you said, the government has recognized the situation on the, on the ground and tried to put in safeguards to see that the, its growth doesn't continue the way it was doing it earlier and that at the same time traditional retailers get a little less competition, little less disadvantages which were earlier, which had started accruing to them once e-commerce. You're, talk, you're talking about the traditional retailers. Yes. See, the, I've made two observations if I could just say one. Yeah, we have recognized what was happening on the ground and today legitimize them. Rightly or wrongly, we discuss, but this is one. Second, while re legitimizing them, recognizing that this, we are admitting that this is not Ill illegal, we have put certain safeguards which are meant to check their unfettered growth the way they had seen it in the past. So, the, I would say there is a change, but it's not a very big change occurring on the ground because things were already there. Okay. Gopal Krishna the, the criticism is that, you know, you, you have succumbed to the pressures of the, uh, you know, of the foreign companies and, you know, it's going to affect the local retailers. I'm sure uh, our other friends here will, will say a little more on that. No, I, I don't think it's uh, like this. We have to see in the larger perspective. Because ultimately, this demand of regulating this sector was coming from the uh, uh, country only. Ultimately, they were operating, as has been mentioned by Mr. Dua, they were operating and without any regulatory process or without any clarity on the policy matter. I think now the, the press release of the government very specifically mentions that these companies are already operating. We have uh, brought, uh, tried to bring some sense into their operations. and. It even taken care of some of the uh, apprehensions of the retail marketing because they have been restricted that they can only trade on Indian products. Secondly, they can only uh, trade of uh, uh, only 25% from single uh, supplier or group of companies. Even various conditions have been put so that they are in a proper uh, perspective move ahead in those conditions. Even they have been uh, uh, done, done away for giving deep discounts. Ultimately at present whatever is the problem or concerns of the retailer is I think both these concerns have been taken care of and even government is now will be able to regulate the system which was at present 
completely out of any uh, regulation and okay. even out of any uh, direction where it will move. There would have been lot many problems created to the whole marketplace if these uh, guidelines were not uh, announced now. Okay, Mr. Mr. Mahajan, what is your what is your you, you apparently the Sudeshi Jagran Munch is not too happy with this policy. Why why are you not happy? See, right uh, from the very beginning we had been saying that the e-commerce companies the uh, the foreign e-commerce companies they are actually circumventing the law yes because fdi is not allowed i underline yes. is not allowed in, in e-commerce we were asking the government under what conditions they are operating they they uh, the companies were saying that we are actually not doing e-commerce, we are actually providing the platform. platform. But we had been time and again saying that actually you are, you are not providing platform, you are, you are putting your money in that, you are advertising. So therefore, this, this question does not arise that you are a platform. Therefore, we, we had been uh, making uh, they were saying that it was only b2b B business yeah they were saying actually they were doing b2c they were actually doing b2c but they were saying they, they would they were just B2B. claiming that yes and therefore we we asked the government to ban these companies blanket ban because if you are circumventing the law it is the duty of the government to to take proper action secondly uh, yes secondly these companies were indulging in uh, some sort of uh, tax evasions as well. There are so many cases pending against them uh, in uh, uh, in ED. Therefore, when the when the companies are doing so much uh, illegal things, it was the duty of the government to actually curb them. Now, what the government has done, they have actually legitimized their functioning. Therefore, so your first your first objection is <laughs> has been taken care of. It's been legitimized. Yeah. So it has been legitimized. And therefore, what we are, ex we, are, we are expecting from the government is that you roll back this. You roll back this. Why? Because you are actually uh, rewarding them, rewarding the lawbreakers with, with the legitimacy. So this is, this is something we are objecting. And now when, when you come to the, the riders, we are very happy that the government is thinking about the riders and the protection of the small uh, traders, but what I am saying is, when they were not allowed to function, they were functioning. <laughs> what are they going to bother about your riders? So these companies, uh, these companies have been doing the same thing everywhere in the world. So it is, it is not that specifically they are, they are, they are in India doing all these uh, bad practices. In fact, what we have been asking for the government was that. Competition Commission of India is not able to take action against these companies for the reason that Competition Commission of India doesn't, uh, the law un under that is not allowing them to take any action. So what we were asking the government was that you take, you, you take some uh, right yes. uh, measures so that these uh, Competition Commission of India's laws are also rectified and uh, they can, uh, they can uh, protect these small traders. So. Uh, what the government has done is actually, uh, I would uh, I would underline that they have legitimized the illegal things. Nilodpal, uh, would you agree with, I will come to you Gopal, uh, would you agree with what Mr. Mahajan says? Is that your concern also or no, is the, what I, are your concerns? I have my separate concerns. Uh, on some points it may converge with that of Mr. Mahajan. But first uh, concern I am saying, I mean, I could not uh, share the confidence of Mr. Agarwal when he says it is because of the domestic pressure that this change has come. I am curious to know that why is it that every time the Prime Minister visits either Western Europe or North America, <laughs> the certain uh, policy announcements are pronounced, I mean which uh, obviously uh, helps the foreign capital, one. Number two question is, you see, that this e-commerce, it is basically retailing, it will be done and once you have 100% FDI, whatever uh, big and tall claims you are making, the BJP, about uh, not allowing uh, FDI in retail, uh, that really false. And uh, 
We is, know is, very is, well. In fact, we, in we, fact, in fact, in fact, the, in fact, some people feel that this is this is one way of allowing FDI in multi brand retail. Absolutely, that is our main critique. And mm. what is going to happen? You see, the mega retail chains are job killers, and and uh, this is even more so because there is a high degree of technology infusion, and therefore, what will have in effect is a major impact on employment today itself one of the leading but newspapers. But this is also a source of employment. No, I am saying that as we have made those studies that uh, as opposed to Walmart for every Walmart store uh, about uh, uh, 3000 jobs are uh, killed in the small retail sector. So therefore you will find a disastrous effect on employment at a time when you are having an agrarian crisis where your farmers the uh, uh, topmost employment generator is languishing number two you have uh, all the problems in the retail sector which will be compounded by this and overall situation of the economy it is it is also uh, in a way foolish because you see every indicator shows that your unemployment is going down, therefore your domestic uh, demand is getting adversely affected and there is no way to grow. And finally, what we are saying that what is e-commerce? E-commerce is having the capacity of deep pockets. If you allow 100% FDI uh, in this sector, what happens that by building uh, warehouses and uh, supply chain network. I mean, there's no way that these regulations can stand. You see, because so, okay. marketplace, marketplace, we say no market cannot can be regulated. And we have seen enough of our regulatory institutions. I mean, they okay. often bend backwards to people with deep pockets. Okay, Agrawal, uh, I want to make. Two point two three points clear. When we are talking of this uh, FDI and this e-commerce, we you have to understand. All have to understand that whatever concerns the retail uh, uh, retailers had, the government has tried to uh, tackle them, ascertain them, and tackle them. One point we are missing in this debate is this e-commerce now platform will only act as an e-commerce platform. They are not even restricted to own uh, uh, sell their own products. They cannot <laughs> hold and ownership cannot be, they cannot sell once they own the product. So they are not purchasing and selling. They, they are will, they only will, they providing only... actually a platform where uh, different people, even, N even NGOs, even social organizations, even small retail uh, organizations themselves can start an e-platform. I think and even they are not allowed to sell foreign product. I think major, major concerns of retailers to that they are not now but you buying agree. and selling, not, nor they are going okay. for deep discounts, nor they are, uh, uh, there will be concentration that more not they will not be allowed to uh, sell more than 25%. So these concerns are actually being taken care of and now government is taking care of the concerns of the retail investor through this policy making. Okay, but you know, but this, this is what is expected. But you agree with Mr. Margin that an illegal thing which was operating all these years have been legalized. No, uh, how can you call it an illegal when there is no law of the land to tackle a thing and it's a, uh, uh, when you are in an internet uh, platform where they were selling, how can you tell Amazon India is an illegal company? You cannot restrict business of anybody or Flipkart was illegal. How can you say when you don't have any law to regulate? Now if they go for deep discount, you can catch them that they are doing illegal. Now, if they sell more than 25% of their single uh, group companies, okay. uh, uh, Amazon was selling 40% of the product of their group companies. Now, they will be restricted to sell. Okay. I know that there will be some concerns. They there are concerns. There are concerns. How much? How we much, are going in that direction. How much? How much of this? Yes, I, I'll come to you. You want to respond? No, I, you, it, I'll come it, to you. It is very painful for me to come around to accept that the national spokesperson of the BJP is not aware of what how e-commerce is uh, right now functioning. I think they are offering all global brands and they are supplying that. And uh, we should not indulge 
in self delusion no, but see, they are now so they were doing that it. he is saying that that is now what that is being I mean, that is what is going to be uh, curtailed now. mr agarwal i expected little patience for uh, ha, you so, uh, uh, so what i am saying yeah. they are uh, sourcing whatever merchandise they are selling from all over the world and that is the nature of mega retail so what you are see, you saying so you are trying to say there one no, second one second they Mr. will just they, they will just out market out elbow all the small retailers okay. in providing okay. and, and because they are using technology well, 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 let, let uh, me get oh, mr dua in they this. will be having mr. a dua, job killing effect mr dua i think the, the is, concerns which are being no, no absolutely if you would recall girish the very fact that fdi in multi brand retail which we've been talking about for years together right. hasn't been allowed right it is largely on grounds that it adversely impacts the sh the small shopkeepers the traditional shopkeepers at least in the vicinity of a large store and this is based on not only global experience but studies commissioned by the government itself by icrea right which said yes it will adversely effect uh, impact the shopkeepers employment etc which they offer to my mind the e-commerce with 100% fdi can be more damaging then, than then, physical then, then, mortar stores coming in because the cost of their set, setting up costs etc are much lower if you would recall there are a number of physical stores which are if you do a physical transaction entry tax etc of the states was to be levied only yesterday gujarat and it was gujarat if you would recall was the one opposing fdi in multi brand retail right. yesterday their finance minister mr saurabh patel was the first one to say that i am reimposing what i had said in the budget or or what i am acting on what i had said in the budget that the e-commerce is adversely impacting the motor the physical stores hence entry tax in gujarat has been levied yesterday so this is an admission by a government consistent with its earlier stand that it does impact that's number one point i wanted to make second the government has had to trade off between fdi inflow and the adverse impact on shopkeepers please let, please let me speak let me speak no no let me speak let let him finish the actual error is coming what that is, what is what is the factual what is what is we did not we did not intervene no no one second one second i'm not interrupting i'll just uh, uh, okay what is the factual error you just, just check what is the factual because our debate is going on the factual error is we have mr basu has not read the press release it is specifically says that these companies are allowed only indian manufacturer i am talking trade. about that so he is coming to that yeah. okay he is coming that. to that yes yeah. the second point which i was mentioning is that about 10 billion dollars of fdi has been committed in the handful of e-commerce platforms which have been created in india it is because of their valuation their venture capitals 9 billion dollar which has come a little more has to come that the valuations of all these indian companies whether okay. flipkart snapdeal jabongs and all those who are going up all of them now if they are to be believed they cannot work under the model of yesterday's notification yes. because most of them were in a hybrid model that means marketplace and inventory based right now But now, now, I now don't the inventory think, now I, the inventory I, based is not is not yeah, allowed i was just coming to that yeah. i don't think these people are going to be falling in line with the safeguards which are there because we and i can tell you from experience we do not have an agency to monitor in the government itself the provisions <coughs> of fema provisions of these fdi regulations which have come under the fema etc the way they got away all these all years, years would to, that is why you you, 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 ex, you you suspect they'll get away again also the because if you see what is being said nowhere has the word deep discount been used this is that the where 100% fdi is allowed they cannot influence the market pricing directly right. or mr. indirectly Mahajan, no mr what Ma does that mean we do not know no, mr bajan no I, i i agree with with what mr dua says and the, the <coughs> concerns expressed by all of you but the fact of the matter is that since the e-commerce companies have come into india and we have all been you know had the had the Uh, advantage of using those e-commerce companies to buy things 
the fact is that it has helped the consumers consumers are getting a lower price than what it what they would get in a in a, a physical store so are you are you not you know working against the interest of the consumers when you say that these companies should not be working see allowed you see uh, actually we are helping the consumers by opposing it and if we are able to convince the government and uh, gopal ji that uh, and he takes our viewpoint there obviously we can also talk to them we had been talking to them and in fact i told the respected uh, finance minister that you should not go ahead with the uh, with any kind of concession to these companies now as far as consumers are concerned you see when you are giving discounts deep discounts you are getting i, I have the example my uh, book is published from uh, delhi and my publisher gives 30% discount yes. to the book uh, booksellers and uh, wholesalers everybody included and the ceo of my company he orders for the book the same book and he gets it at a discount of 40% yes. so that means you are giving you are putting your own money just to capture the market just to capture the market and therefore so yeah, this, are, this, are, this, are, this is this is what i am asking i am asking i am i am giving answer to your question yes that you if you are helping the consumer by giving extra discounts they are not sustainable the only thing is that they, what they are waiting for is to capture the market so that no i i will give okay. you just this is a, no no i just one, one sentence supplementing uh, dr mahajan you see the business model of mega retail is this that profit is actually appropriated in terms of the market share and once you capture the market walmart also if you see the history, yes so no, that, 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 that is let me let me give the answer let me give your question no no but no that's all fine but can you control it yeah you cannot that is there is there no he says that there is that is that is what that is what i'm saying that when these companies when the the law was not allowing them to even enter the market they were functioning they were functioning they, they were, were functioning thriving tr- yeah. and and uh, i don't agree with gopal ji that uh, there was no law law existed that was circumvented uh, that, uh, and it was circumvented how how flipkart was able to get 80% equity when when fdi is not allowed in e-commerce companies so it is it is i'm not saying it is during the nda regime or whosoever's regime is everybody who, everybody uh, policy so, regime yes. so any policy regime mm-hmm. what i'm ask, saying is that <coughs> they have been flouting the rules and therefore they should have been punished they uh, instead and, they have been inquiry, rewarded and inquiries should should have been instead constituted instead you are saying that they have been rewarded gopal krishna agarwal uh, what yeah. i want to say that no, I, no yeah. we have discussed we huh. have discussed all the pros and cons yeah. but madam my our our question everybody is Mr. Dua especially was pointing out. Hmm. Is will you know you are talking of regulations? You have brought in this thing saying that you know we'll, there will be better regulations and and because of that there there will be a better improvement in the situation. But the concern is that there will be no the regulations itself will not be you know in, will will not will not be proper because because just the marketplace is so huge, the internet is so huge. How are you going to control them? See, ultimately, you are working in a digital environment. When you are talking of digital, uh, digital India, so you have to go for the international uh, operations. But what I tell you, I agree with major co- apprehensions that uh, Mr. Mahajan, Dr. Mahajan, and Mr. Basu had. Uh, that is about e-commerce. Uh, that's what I am telling. Is our focus is to uh, ca- capture those concerns and control them. ultimately the you the question is how how far you will be able to all the three under concerns, what law if i can just there were three concerns that international product will come through this e-commerce mm. that has been restricted they will there will be monopolistic mm. situation that has been restricted mm. they will only provide a platform that has been provided for even there was a proper that they will capture market by allowing deep discount ultimately which this guide if they flout now any of these guidelines they will be now okay. put there to is, books okay and there, I, uh, there is no word used this is used the way we have to move ahead okay okay there is no word used in yesterday's press notes or the notification that discounts cannot be offered the it the restriction is imposed upon influencing the market price yes today 
also what is this influencing exactly is again it is, is something it, I mean, courts yes. will have to interpret and how do you without having an actual machinery today who is what is the machinery the and state is there a law no yes. none at all under yes. shops and what establishment was, act he just goes to see whether you are switching it off your light at eight o'clock or not <laughs> or no, you are doing we, any such we, labor issues there is absolutely no way to check today there is no machinery there is no law which says that you cannot sell below a particular price. And how is it getting facilitated? Amazon incurred a loss of 6,000 crores till the year before because it was offering discounts under the name of marketing promotion. Right. The point which was just made by Dr. Mahajan. If somebody said 30%, they said you offer 60%. Yes. Other 30% is coming from us. And at the end of the year, they showed a loss of 6,000 rupees. And it's a loss for that year. They have captured a market. Next year, the discounts that in yes. the we are all we have all we have we, 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 we have all been victims yeah. of this. We, we, <laughs> actually, One what I'm is. what I'm saying is, yeah. we when we raised this issue with the government, what we were expecting was that there is there is a provision in the in Indian Indian law that there there exists a regulator called uh, Competition Commission of India, which can regulate the any any misuse or uh, misuse of uh, dominance dominant position now this cci wa was expect expressing its helplessness because to it deal with have, this it doesn't it, have a yeah it, to deal with this so to deal with this therefore therefore what we were expecting that before coming to any conclusion the government should have rectified the competition commission of india's okay. regulations as well okay okay i think yeah, ultimately giriji one small yeah. point yes uh, you have to bring efficiency in the supply chain similar problem is happening in the uh, apmc act and mondays what okay. is happening in that y okay. you have okay. to streamline the supply chain and bring efficiency in then bring so transparency and platforms so whether, whether, whether just supply chain efficiency will 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 resolve it all these concerns. It depends on who we is investing know. for that supply chain. Anyway, okay. I mean, if the dominant player, yes. he, okay, we, we, he we, controls the okay, supply Nilozbar, chain. Okay, I think we have completely run and out of time. But the, fact like that is, also. but the fact is that there are several concerns which are, which, which are being expressed about how efficiently this new policy will work and what will be the, whether, whether the foreign companies which are going to come in and invest here will be, able, will be following all the regulations which are being imposed. We'll have to wait and watch. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time tomorrow.